Hi everyone, vlog number six. All right, today I'm going to talk about uh, Maxime Noche's World Championship board. Um, this is the Temavento board that he used at the Gold Cup in Qatar. Um, pretty sure he's still on this board. Um, I've actually also ordered the foil he was on from Banga. So uh, I plan to do a comprehensive review of the whole setup that he is riding at the moment, just to sort of tell you about how it actually rides and you know why it's so fast. But for now, let's just talk about the board. Temavento is an Italian brand that's been around for quite some time. They've been sort of a powerhouse in racing. They've had a couple of world champions on their boards, namely, for example, Florian Gruber um, won the Formula World Championship on a Temavento board. And like I said, Maxime Noche um, has, has had most of his uh, foil boards have been from Temavento too. Um, all right, let's get into it. It's uh, EPS foam and carbon sandwich board. That makes it quite light. This one weighs about 2.9 kilos when it's naked, no straps or anything with the straps on it. It's about 3.1 at the moment. I've got like your typical racing light with straps on here. It has a fairly interesting, unique um, hull design. See, there's sort of a, see closely, the tail of the board has a quite large flat section and as you get to the nose of the board, the flat section thins out. Uh, if you look at most of the other boards around at the moment, that flat section on the bottom of the board, before it goes into the bevels, usually is either the same, it's uniform from front to back, or it actually thins out towards the back. So this is quite unique on the Tema Bento. Um, the bevels are also fairly shallow as that um, center area is not so wide. Right. Again, the rail's fairly sharp. Uh, of course, you don't want a too round rail because that will actually catch the water and try to grip. You don't want the rails on a foil board to grip the water. Uh, the board is 144 long and 45 wide, and it looks about, um, I think, between 7.5 and, and 8 centimeters thick. I haven't actually measured that, so I'm probably wrong. Um, if I'd had to guess, this board is um, fairly close to the high 20s. 20 liter range, so probably around 27 28 liters. Um, this makes it actually extremely good for again a little bit heavier riders, you don't have to be as small as Maxime to use it. Um, also, just it has generally good width at 40, I think it's between 45 and 46 actually on this board. For those that uh, are like, ah, custom boards, gonna take ages to get one. Good news for you is Moses is bringing this board in two different sizes. Um, as a standard production board. Um, so I believe that it's gonna be in this size, it's the small one, it's like 144 by 45, and then you're making a bigger one, which is also 144, but it's slightly wider, I think it's like 48 wide for the little bit heavier riders. So I had it out yesterday in actually perfect conditions to test in, horrible conditions to actually foil it. Complete low end, on a 19 square meter R1 V2. Um, I actually had to use 20 meter lines to get going properly. It was full of holes, it was choppy, but when you're testing a board, that's a great um, set of conditions to have. Why? Because you're not constantly on the foil. If you wanna know how good the board is, you're gonna have to go out in super light winds and see um, how the board reacts when the foil is not engaged. So. How easy is it to get up on the plane on the board without actually having the foil helping it? Um, how does it react when it hits pieces of chop? How does it react in wind holes when you touch down for a small little time? For example, uh, uh, my jibes suck in, in super light wind on the big kites and typically I have like a little, little dead point. Sometimes I will drop off the foil and when, how does the board touch down? It did pretty good. Yeah, I wouldn't say that it's the most optimal board for like a super, super light conditions where you're using the board almost more than the foil to get up. I did have to take my back foot out of the uh, back foot strap and put it farther forward, just move my weight a bit farther forward to get the board to move. I found that it dragged a bit when I was in the foot strap in the back. 
could also be a bit of a setting issue. Um, but once I had my foot farther forward, I could get up pretty easy. Remember, this was between three and six knots, horrible conditions, like full of holes, so I still managed to ride, so that was pretty good. Um, the volume is mainly concentrated towards the back, if you look at the board. There's a lot of volume and thickness carried into the tail, and your volume reduces as you get actually under your front feet. Now, this plays quite nicely into when you're hiking upwind in chalk. What's great about this board is, uh, no matter how hard I pushed it and how low I got into the water, it didn't catch a rail. So it was pretty good. Uh, you've probably seen some of the videos, I'll probably put the clip right in right now. You've probably seen some of the videos where you can just get a little bit of a touch um, on this section, but you see that the board it didn't veer off or anything, it just sort of just went through it without, as if nothing happened. Um, how did it deal with touchdowns, like during jives and so on, when you've lost a bit of power? It did great. It, sort of, it bounced down, didn't get caught, there was no drag, I managed to just get it straight back up on the foil. Um, there weren't any things where the board would just stop when I touched down. So, yeah, that worked pretty good. Alright, another thing I'd like to talk about, which is great, which not all foil boards have, is the US box tracks in this uh, board. These US box tracks are, the way they look to me at least, they are uh, windsurfing mask tracks. Which means that your hole where you put in your um, little platelets where you screw your screws into are way in the front. And if you look at some of the other boxes, like for example Chinook, they're in the middle. Um, they're both probably just as strong. But the cool thing about this, and I'll show you how that is now, is that you do not need take the, you do not need the cool thing about this, which I'll show you now, is that you do not need to unscrew the screws completely from the plates um, to get the foil on and off. Check this out. Got the screws in here, making sure that they're lined up. Okay. Start with the back. There you go, it's in. Um, that's pretty cool, saves a lot of time. Um, so, I like that. Without taking it out. Whoop. Whoop. That's it. So, kudos for having a system like that. I'm pretty sure that I would like to see this on all, all sort of um, track systems on all the boards. I hope it um, gave you a bit of an insight into um, the Temavento board. Click like if you like the video. Um, any feedback is appreciated in the comments section. And if you like the channel, please subscribe. All right, see you on the water. Thank you.